Hi, welcome guys to a new video. Today we're going to talk about the cheapest ways to heat a room. And right now I'm in my living room and it's pretty cold because it's early in the morning and the heating was not running for the whole night so it cooled down pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is close the door to keep the heat then maybe turn my oil radiator on a little bit boost the temperature with a space heater let's plug it in and we're ready to go for the video so let's set up the camera okay there we go today we're going to talk about as I already said about the 10 cheapest ways to heat a room or to keep warm in a room because heating is not always about using external heating sources like a space heater but also about how you clothe yourself and keep yourself warm so let's just start with the first tip and this first tip is sitting right next to me it's using an energy efficient space heater by using a space heater you can simply keep warm even in a cold room and by just plugging it in and then letting it produce some heat for you. The advantage of a space heater is that you don't heat your whole apartment with it, but just the room you're in. So this space heater is currently plugged into the wall plug and it draws the energy from there. Instead, if I turn on the central heating or the oil field radiator that is attached to the central heating, then to produce the heat, the central heating system in our house has to turn on which has to produce a lot more heat because it has to heat a big water tank but using a space heater makes sure that you don't waste energy and heat just the room you're in. The advantage of such an infrared heater as this one is that it heats in a directional way so Currently the space heater faces in this direction, so it heats just the objects that are in front of it. If I face it to me, then I can feel the heat and everything behind the heater would, be, would stay cold. So you can actually focus the heat using such a space heater and have more of an impact of what you heat. That's the reason why people often say that infrared heaters, such as this one, are about 40% more efficient than other types of heaters. For example, with an oil filled heater, like this one, you would heat the whole room and you can't really have an impact on which direction you heat. When it comes to energy efficient heating, new trends don't really get around smart thermostats. Smart thermostats are actually pretty much the same as normal thermostats, However, you can program them. So for example, you can set different times and assign different temperatures to these times and then the thermostat automatically controls the temperature over the course of the day, however you want it. For example, if you go to work, you can automatically shut off the thermostat and then after eight hours, you can set the thermostat to automatically reheat your home. By using such an automatic thermostat or smart thermostat, studies have shown that you can save up to 23% in heating costs, which, which is actually pretty good because you have to pay only once to get this thermostat. For example, a normal Ecobee thermostat costs around $200 or $150 depending on the deal you get and over the course of a few years you easily make that money back. So a smart thermostat is not only a way to help you save money each month but it's actually pretty much the same as a real investment because it saves you money. The third tip to save money while heating is to have proper insulation. For example, insulate your attic because whenever you have an ins uninsulated attic 
the heat pretty much rises to the roof and leaks. Also, as long as you don't have proper insulation, there will be increased air exchange with the outside world and you don't want that. So whenever you heat and the air escapes right away, you're pretty much wasting energy. That's why you will need proper insulation. You can just type in insulation tutorial or how to insulate your attic on YouTube and you will find tons of helpful videos by insulation experts. I'm personally not really an expert, I'm still learning about insulation, but that's what I currently know about it. And um, by using insul insulation you can, similarly to using a smart thermostat, save money on your electricity bill long term because the heat you produce using such a heater uh, is retained for much longer times and you don't need to um, reheat your room often. Also, insulation will not only keep you warm in winter, but it will keep you cool in summer because the outdoor heat has a really hard time to enter your home because it can't really pass the insulation. So insulation helps you in winter and in summer, so you pretty much benefit from it all year round. That's why every home should have proper insulation, especially the attic where heat can easily escape. Oftentimes insulation is also pretty cheap. You can simply look for insulation kits on Amazon and you will have several different kits with fiberglass insulation or styrofoam balls and they are pretty much beginner friendly, I would say and um, there are tons of resources on how to easily do that. My third tip to save money on heating is to always have a simple carpet in your room. If you don't have a carpet in your room, your feet will always feel cold. And that's because a carpet creates small air bubbles or air pockets. And these air pockets, they are contained in the carpet insulate your floor from the cold and when air moves around in your room then it is less likely to cool down on the floor because it doesn't really touch the floor. So a carpet is actually a pretty straightforward way to add another layer of insulation to your room. Even though it's not really considered insulation but in fact it is. That's why oftentimes carpets are so essential for living in a room because without a carpet a room oftentimes feels cold and it feels so uncomfortable. That's because a carpet adds warmth to your room and limits the heat loss. So if you don't have a carpet in your room definitely consider getting one. Okay and here comes tip number five which is also pretty straightforward. Wear slippers. A simple pair of slippers will help you so much in, in saving money heating because as long as you keep your feet warm there will be pretty much no need for heating. Similar to a carpet, slippers also contain the warm air around your foot and create a warm air pocket. Otherwise the warm air that accumulates in your foot would simply disappear but with slippers you retain that heat. So it's pretty much free heating. And slippers are pretty inexpensive. You can get a standard pair for $20, maybe even $10. I recommend getting slippers with a comfortable material that covers your whole foot. My sixth tip for saving money while heating a room is to actually wear warm clothing. I'm currently at home and I didn't decide to run around in a t-shirt but in a nice pullover and I just feel much more comfortable at home because it keeps me warm, I don't constantly have to heat my room and yeah, I like to just wear long clothing at home. But I know some people that run around at home in their <laughs> underwear and waste so much money on their electricity or utility bills, it's insane. So just consider wearing warm clothes at home, it will just save you so much heating costs. And tip number seven is actually something about clever heating. It's about this. Only heat the room you're in. 
as long as you just heat the room you're in and keep the temperature in other rooms, though, you will save money. It's as easy as that. So, whenever you leave a room, turn down the heating, and whenever you enter a new room, turn up the heating in that room. You can also bring a space heater with you, because space heaters can deliver heat much faster than these central heating radiators. If you, for example, enter a room for just five minutes and you absolutely need to be heated in that room, then you can quickly grab such a space heater, bring it with you, turn it on, and after five minutes you can go leave the room and take that space heater with you to your next destination. And this way you save another part on your heating bill, which I think is pretty much practical and makes sense. Why would you heat the room that you're not using? Especially with rooms that you never use, for example, a storage room or a garage gym or some kind of office in your apartment that you don't use. Why would you heat, heat these rooms? It's pretty much a waste of money and that's why you should always pay attention to which rooms consume heat, which rooms need heat and where you can save your money. Tip number eight is to use an electric blanket. This is a tip for people who don't really want to pay much heating expenses. So what an electric blanket does is you wrap it around yourself, just like a regular blanket, but it's electrically heated. And because the blanket heats just your body, and not the entire room, you save an additional ton of money. If you heated yourself just using an electric blanket, I'm sure your heating bill would decrease significantly. And what I personally like about electric blankets is that they use just a tenth of the power that a space heater needs. For example, a regular space heater needs 1500 watts of power. A regular electric blanket needs just 150 watts of power, which is just a tenth, and accordingly your costs would decrease to 10%. Of course you can't always run around having a blanket wrapped around yourself, especially when you invite guests. But for example, when you're having a cozy movie night on your couch, why not just use the blanket? That's a very personal decision, what you like, what you don't like. I personally like to be in a room where the air itself feels warm and not just a blanket. But if you use a blanket, you can save money significantly. My ninth tip about heating a room is to actually leave the doors of your room closed. As long as you have an open door, the heat you produce in one room escapes and moves into the other rooms. So that's as if you're heating multiple rooms at once, which is not really what you want. And um, by keeping the heat in just the room you're in, you can decrease your heater usage. And my final and last tip is the very cheapest way you can heat that I know about. And it's pretty simple, but don't worry, it's nothing too fancy it's using a very simple hot water bottle. I did some computations myself. I used the electricity rates in the US and, how much, and calculated how much it costs to heat water and how much water needs to be in a hot water bottle. And the result was that an average hot water bottle costs just two cents to heat up. So if you spend your evening on your couch and you make yourself a hot water bottle, you pay just two cents for that bottle, and it may last you for 30 minutes, one hour, one and a half hours, maybe even two hours, especially when you have a blanket with you, then that hot water bottle will cost you next to nothing because it will last a very long time because the blanket that's above the hot water bottle will retain the heat. So having a hot water bottle will effectively save you money. Using a hot water bottle is a really dirt cheap way to keep warm in a cold room and to 
save money on, a, on your utility bills. Okay, that's it. There was 10 tips on how you can heat a room cheaply, but there's even more. There's actually a lot more you can do to heat cheaply. And I've included even more in a big article on my website heatertips.com slash cheap dash heating. So just type it in your browser heatertips.com slash cheap dash heating and uh, you'll find a big article with 21 tips to heat a home effectively and efficiently and um, how to save money. So this article includes all the tips that I told you in this video, all the 10 tips you know about, but in written form, plus an additional 11 tips you can look up so you know everything about how to keep room heated at the lowest cost possible. I hope this video was helpful and if yes then leave a like and comment down below and I would actually be really interested in the heating tips you have to share and maybe I'll include them in a future video. So thank you for watching and bye!